December 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hosea chapters 12 through 14 of the Old Testament. Ephraim continually feeds on the wind. He chases the east wind all day. He multiplies lies and violence. They make treaties with Assyria and send olive oil as tribute to Egypt. The Lord also has a covenant lawsuit against Judah. He will punish Jacob according to his ways and repay him according to his deeds. In the womb he attacked his brother. In his manly vigor he struggled with God. He struggled with an angel and prevailed. He wept and begged for his favor. He found God at Bethel and there he spoke with him. As for the Lord God Almighty, the Lord is the name by which he is remembered. But you must return to your God by maintaining love and justice and by waiting for your God to return to you. The businessmen love to cheat. They use dishonest scales. Ephraim boasts, I am very rich. I have become wealthy. In all that I have done to gain my wealth, no one can accuse me of any offense that is actually sinful. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. I will make you live in tents again as in the days of old. I spoke to the prophets. I myself revealed many visions. I spoke in parables through the prophets. Is there idolatry in Gilead? Certainly its inhabitants will come to nothing. Do they sacrifice bulls in Gilgal? Surely their altars will be like stones heaped up on a plowed field. Jacob fled to the country of Aram. Then Israel worked to acquire a wife. He tended sheep to pay for her. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt by a prophet, and due to a prophet, Israel was preserved alive. But Ephraim bitterly provoked him to anger. So he will hold him accountable for the blood he has shed. His Lord will repay him for the contempt he has shown. When Ephraim spoke, there was terror. He was exalted in Israel, but he became guilty by worshiping Baal and died. Even now they persist in sin. They make metal images for themselves, idols that they skillfully fashion from their own silver. All of them are nothing but the work of craftsmen. There is a saying about them. Those who sacrifice to the calf idol are calf kissers. Therefore they will disappear like the morning mist like early morning dew that evaporates, like chaff that is blown away from the threshing floor, like smoke that disappears through an open window. But I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Therefore you must not acknowledge any God but me. Except me there is no Savior. I cared for you in the wilderness, in the dry desert where no water was. When they were fed, they became satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. As a result, they forgot me. So I will pounce on them like a lion, like a leopard. I will lurk by the path. I will attack them like a bear robbed of her cubs. I will rip open their chest. I will devour them there like a lion, like a wild animal would tear them apart. I will destroy you, O Israel. Who is there to help you? Where then is your king? that he may save you in all your cities. Where are your rulers for whom you ask, saying, Give me a king and princes? I granted you a king in my anger, and I will take him away in my wrath. The punishment of Ephraim has been decreed. His punishment is being stored up for the future. The labor pains of a woman will overtake him, but the baby will lack wisdom. When the time arrives, he will not come out of the womb. Will I deliver them from the power of Sheol? No, I will not. Will I redeem them from death? No, I will not. O oh, death, bring on your plagues. O oh, Sheol, bring on your destruction. My eyes will not show any compassion. Even though he flourishes like a reed plant, a scorching east wind will come, a wind from the Lord rising up from the desert. As a result, his spring will dry up, his well will become dry. That wind will spoil all his delightful foods in the containers in his storehouse. Samaria will be held guilty because she rebelled against her God. They will fall by the sword. Their infants will be dashed to the ground. Their pregnant women will be ripped open. 
Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for your sin has been your downfall. Return to the Lord and repent. Say to him, completely forgive our iniquity. Accept our penitential prayer that we may offer the praise of our lips as sacrificial bulls. Assyria cannot save us. We will not ride war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For only you will show compassion to orphan Israel. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. For my anger will turn away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. He will send down his roots like a cedar of Lebanon. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. His fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. People will reside again in his shade. They will plant and harvest grain in abundance. They will blossom like a vine. And his fame will be like the wine from Lebanon. O Ephraim, I do not want to have anything to do with idols anymore. I will answer him and care for him. I am like a luxuriant cypress tree. Your fruitfulness comes from me. Who is wise? Let him discern these things. Who is discerning? Let him understand them. For the ways of the Lord are right. The godly walk in them, but in them the rebellious stumble. God, there's a lot of poetry in Hosea. It's kind of easy to miss because there's also a lot of discipline, a lot of harshness, a lot of anger, <laughs> I guess I can say, uh, disappointment. But in chapter 14, it says, I will heal their waywardness and love them freely, for my anger will turn away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. He will send down his roots like a cedar of Lebanon. I think uh, some people may miss the power of the word dew here. Dew for Israel was actually one of their main sources of water. It wasn't like dew like we're used to, which is something annoying that we have to get off of our car windshield in order to drive in the morning time or that makes the stairs wet or sometimes our window at the front of our windows uh, kind of foggy. Dew was actually their life water. From it flowed all things having to do with life. Not only the lilies and the trees, but the people themselves. You weren't just saying, okay, I'll be the good guy once again, and I'll just uh, ignore my anger, and we'll just move on from here, and I'm just going to help you with all this. Not at all. You gave them life. You literally brought them back from the dead, from this idol worship, from destruction, from sin, from idol worship of these different deities you brought them back and reconciled in a relationship with them some then some of it will happen in the future as we were just reading about in Revelation but how incredible that you are offering the life saving water that they need for their lives to be healthy for them to grow and for them to exist day to day, in this case, doing your work here on earth. God, I don't want us to overlook something that's very small, like dew drops. As we walk out this morning, and we might see them on the grass or different places. God, I just want you to remind us of the power of that water. Of that water in the life of Israel back then that it was their life water. It was how they actually were able to live. God, remind us always that it is you who gives us life, not our idols, not our free, frivolous time, not the things that we pay attention to, like entertainment and relationships, but it is you, the living water in our life. You are the reason that we are alive. Many people think we have various purposes in life. Some having to do with us, some having to do with you. But I truly believe that you are the reason 
you are the purpose for our life to glorify you in the life that you've given us to live my life the best possible way I can glorifying you reflecting you and allowing your due your life force to flow through me God thank you for allowing us to be that for you I pray all this in your son's name Amen.